Welcome to the Tarantula Collective. My name is Richard, and if you enjoy species-specific care and husbandry videos like this, as well as all things tarantula related, then be sure you hit that subscribe button, and don't forget to click the notification bell to turn on all notifications so you're alerted every time I upload a new video. Now this week we're going to be talking about a new world terrestrial species that was my first tarantula ever. I'm sure it's the same story for a lot of people out there. They're very common in the hobby, very easy to take care of, and not very expensive at all. And though I've heard reports to the contrary, mine has always been a very gentle, docile sweetheart. The Rosehair Tarantula or the Chilean Rosehair Tarantula, known in the hobby by the scientific names Gremistola rosea and Gremistola portier. You can also find these tarantulas under the common names Chilean Fire Tarantula, Chilean Red Haired Tarantula, and Rosie. This may be the most common tarantula in the hobby and can usually be found in pet stores around the world. This is a new world terrestrial tea that is endemic to the scrublands of Chile, Bolivia, and Argentina. Part of the reason they're so common in the hobby is because wild caught specimens were cheaply exported from Chile. If you purchase your tarantula from a reputable tarantula breeder or dealer, you will most likely be getting a captive bred specimen. The danger from buying this tea from a pet store, especially large national chains, is that they can be selling wild caught tarantulas that may be full grown, but they have no idea what sex the tea is, how old it may be, and wild caught specimens can have parasites or other health issues that can cause issues further on down the line. So you're always better off buying captive bred specimens, not only to support tarantula dealers and breeders, but also so you're not supporting the large scale trade of wild caught specimens. There's also been a lot of confusion about whether a rosehair tarantula is a rosea or portier. So hopefully we can break down the differences here. This is another prime example where common names can be misleading and why most keepers eventually prefer to use scientific names to avoid confusion. The Chilean rosehair tarantula, or Gremistola porteri, is one of the most commonly available tarantulas in the pet trade today and is quite often the first species kept by most enthusiasts. The grills in my mouth double as a freeze rope. Rose hairs are most often a grayish brown with a pinkish hue across the top of their head, also known as the carapace. These tarantulas grow very slowly until they reach about a five inch diagonal leg span, sometimes larger. The rose hair has become so popular because of its long life expectancy and incredible hardiness. When first brought into the pet trade, the Chilean rose hair was scientifically known as the Gramistola rosea and was available in two color forms, the red color form and the normal color form. After much studying on the taxonomy of the Chilean rosehair, the gray or the normal color form was the Gramistola porteri, while the red color form rosehair was actually the Gramistola rosea. Now I keep my spiderlings in an acrylic AMAC box modified for housing slings. Make sure the holes aren't too big so the tiny spiderling doesn't squeeze its way out. I fill the enclosure up over halfway with substrate and provide a cork bark hide and tiny water dish if possible. If not, I just drip a little water on the side of the enclosure twice a week to make sure it has access to water. I keep these slings, like all my slings, in my spiderling nursery that keeps the temp and humidity a little higher than the rest of the room. Once they've outgrown that enclosure, I move them into an acrylic juvenile enclosure with more width than height. I fill up the enclosure at least half to two thirds of the way with dry substrate and provide a water dish and a cork bark hide. I will also add some sphagnum moss, dried leaves, or fake plants to make the enclosures look a little more natural. I keep my juveniles and adults at room temperature between 68 to 74 degrees Fahrenheit. If you're comfortable, your tarantula's comfortable. And as adults, I move them into a two and a half to five gallon enclosure. It is important to provide your tea with at least three times its leg span and floor space so they have enough room to move around. I also make sure to fill the enclosure up at least halfway or more with substrate as this species is known to climb the walls and across the top of its enclosure, especially after a rehouse. I don't want more than one and a half times its leg span from the top of the enclosure to the substrate to avoid any damage that could come from a fall. 
This species can have an awesome feeding response when it feels like eating. Rosaires are notorious for going on long hunger strikes for months at a time, and it can be very worrisome to a new keeper. No matter what stage your tea is in life, if it closes itself off in its burrow or just refuses to take food for weeks or months at a time, don't worry. This is perfectly normal behavior for this species. I feed my spiderling rose hairs confused flower beetles or flightless fruit flies until they're large enough to start taking pinhead crickets or red runners. I feed them one or two pinhead crickets twice a week until they've begun to grow out of their spiderling stage. If they don't take down their prey within 24 hours, I remove the prey and try again in three to four days. For juveniles, I feed two to three small or medium crickets or one medium dubia roach every 10 to 14 days, depending on the size of the abdomen. As the species nears pre-molt, they can really cut back on feeding and may go months without taking food before they molt. I wait at least a week after a molt before attempting to feed my juvenile, giving them plenty of time to harden up. And for adults, I feed four to five large crickets or one large dubia every two to three weeks, sometimes less depending on the size of the abdomen and appetite of the tarantula. Again, if the tea goes months without eating at this size, I do not worry. My adult rose hair once went 14 months without taking a cricket until she finally molted. I will wait 14 days after a molt before attempting to feed again and remove any uneaten prey within 24 hours. This species is a staple in the hobby and many people's first tarantula. My first two tarantulas were rose hairs. Even though they are usually considered an ideal beginner tarantula, some people claim that they can be feisty and defensive from time to time. This hasn't been my experience, but I've heard this reported from enough people to at least mention it. As with all tarantulas, their personalities can vary between specimens of the same species. Things such as stress level, type of husbandry, and how long since they last fed can all factor into their attitude. Tarantulas are even known to change their personalities after a molt. So no matter what species you're interacting with, it is always best to attempt to gauge their mood before coming into close contact with them. Overall, this is a hardy, easy to care for, and classically beautiful tarantula that is a must have for any collection. They may get passed over a lot because they're so common, but they truly are a gorgeous tarantula. Now, I've always had a special place in my heart for this species. My first tarantula I got when I was 18 years old, freshman in college, kept it in my dorm. And I used to take it out all the time and let it crawl on me while I was studying. More than anything, I think just to freak out my roommate and the girls he would bring over. Mine was always very relaxed, very docile, and it didn't even cross my mind that it could get defensive until I brought it to the pet store I bought it from years later and just stuck my hand in there and pulled it out to have them take a look, make sure she was doing okay, because she hadn't eaten for such a long time. The guy at the pet store kind of took a few steps back and told me that was not a good idea, that I should not be handling my adult tarantula. But 20 years ago, there wasn't a whole lot of information available on the internet. I didn't handle her too much after that warning, but she never stopped being docile and just a chilled tarantula. Over all these years keeping up, I've always made sure I had this species in my collection. And the second tarantula I ever had just died of old age about six months ago. But I've got a sling and a juvenile in my collection just to make sure I always have one on hand. This tarantula is so easy to take care of and so beautiful. I highly suggest it to anyone keeping teas. Well, if you enjoyed this video, be sure you hit that like button. It helps future keepers find this content further on down the line. If you want to support this channel, make sure you subscribe and share this video with your friends. I upload new videos every Tuesday for Tarantula Tuesday, so I hope to see you back next week. If you're looking for some tarantula content to read, I highly suggest you check out the magazine, The Spinneret. I'll leave a link to it down below in the description. Each new issue focuses on one very cool species of tarantula, so be sure you check that out. If you want to know what's going on here in the collective in between these videos, you can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or join the Facebook group. And I just started an account on TikTok where I'm uploading short feeding clips or happy dances, pretty much any 20 or 30 second video that didn't quite make it into an episode. And I'll leave a link for that down below in the description as well. Well, thank you all for watching. I really appreciate all your support. Hopefully I will see you on Instagram or TikTok, but if not, I will see you next Tuesday. <laughs> Going up elevator.
elevate, watch me demonstrate, on time never late, I grind celebrate, no pump fake hesitate, I been scoring every day, champagne Perrier, since 9-3 been in the box, now I'm stepping up to home, like straight out the sand lot, now I'm plying on the globe, I work hard, I show love, that karma steady growing, got this far, I go hard, let God take control, I was starving, skinny, now my weight up Got no energy for haters See you trying, see you later See you later. I'm shooting for the stars Need no laser beam Blowing like the greatest But it's one who's always greater Yo. Go dummy, go beast on him I go beast Go deep, I OD on him